Hey, it's Les from the TV Dudes. This year, as part of our ATX Television Festival Season 8 coverage, I was lucky enough to chat with Jacob Tierney, Mark Montefiore, Nathan Dales, Michelle Milet, and Kay Trevor Wilson, the cast, director, and producer of Letterkenny. Hope you enjoy. So this is Les from the TV Dudes. Um, we're a weekly podcast. Uh, about eight years now, we do weekly television print of uh, stuff that's on the air right now. And a couple times a week, we drop interviews with uh, talent creators, directors. Uh, kind of how TV gets made. Uh, Letter Kenny represents a uh, Venn diagram between my friends that I did not know existed. <laughs> I, I, have I understood s- there would be no math with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again, twist. <laughs> uh, That's what you do. I have, I have sort of the friends that watch different shows, and I, and I watch a weird amount of TV, so you know I'm, I'll be able to talk to friends about Greek and then talk to friends about X-Files and, and things like that. But sometimes those circles don't overlap. I have two friends that I don't think have a single thing in common. I, I don't think you could get Crystal and Dax to hang out in a room. And they both will not stop talking about Letterkenny for the previous year. Yes. Wow. Which was amazing. So then finally I was like, I, I, I will watch that. I will watch it. Absolutely amazing show. Thank Please. you. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you to Dax and Crystal. Yeah. 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 Indeed. It's really... It, I Are they on them. our show? Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can each of you talk a little bit about... Uh, the comedy of the show, which is different than what I think of as a standard sitcom structure, uh, there's almost long-form jokes and the, the kinds of things that, that seem oh, risky long. and dangerous to, to do on television <laughs> if you don't balance it just right. Can you each speak a little bit about finding the right tone with your characters with making the show? Take that, Jacob. Yeah, Grab the horn. Yeah. Um, Have at it. yeah I mean, we... Yeah, I don't know... I, I, I don't know how it started. It just was the way we did the show. Like, there was no real forethought into, like, let's make this different. It was just like, this is what we're going to do here. Like, when we first started, when we wrote the first season, it was really just like me and Jared in a room making each other laugh. And that was what happened. There was always going to be like an amb- it was always going to amble and ramble. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, and we knew we were, early on, we knew we were on a streaming service, so we knew we didn't have to do commercial breaks we didn't have to structure things in that way Mm -hmm. which is very freeing and uh, suddenly you're like well we can kind of get away with whatever we can get away with and the first season we just didn't know if anybody would pay any attention to it whatsoever so it was like well let's just do what we want to do and then we kept doing it like I I, I wish I had a better answer for you other than that was the way it felt right and then once you keep doing it it's like we we love running jokes clearly Um, (laughs) so it was like we're still we're still working off of riffs we started in season 3 in season 904 um, that we're doing now like it's uh, because we it's the yeah I don't know it it makes us laugh really yeah (laughs) Yeah, I think it's just um, the way that the jokes are written down. You just get to play with it. As somebody who just gets the script and you get to see what you're supposed to say, you just go and you go with what's written down. And that's I know that's a kind of a shitty short answer there, but that's it. Like they that's write, they write, and then we say it. And it's just yeah. like, and you just hope that the joke continues and continues and continues, and then it does sometimes, and you just kind of love it. Yeah. It's great. But other than that, yeah, you just uh, you, you fall back a lot on uh, the good writing, and I think that's a... Well, and who doesn't want to think about space? <laughs> yeah. And what happens up there, and how you mix a batch. Oh, my God. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> ants yeah. writing cd Yeah, ants writing cd yeah. I mean, so when they get written, the jokes get written down, and then you just get to see them, and you just get to fucking have fun with them. And, and, that's, and, that, and that's the best Sometimes I do just imagine Mark, Mark reading them being like, okay, I don't know, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Don't you make your fucking show again. Yeah. 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 Like, do I have a note? I don't know where to start, but yeah. uh, a note. Uh, Just no, go. I, I, yeah. First off, none of these words are spelled. That's generally how the script reading goes. Yeah. You're like, okay, well. Here we go. Oh. Yeah. Trevor, I think I first heard about you because of friends telling me how great your stand-up was. Oh, nice. Tell your friends thank you. Uh, <laughs> you just met Melissa. It's her fault. Uh, oh, Germani, nice. Or Giramonte that you met earlier. Um, Love Melissa. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Um, she sounds great. <laughs> Do you find uh, overlap or, or huge gap differences where you, you think sometimes, now oh, that's a squirrely Dan bit, that's not, I shouldn't put that on stage, or, or that's too much my stage act, this should be more squirrely Dan? Not really. Um, I mean, from the beginning, uh, everyone was aware of my stand-up, and like, every once in a while I'll get a call from Jared uh, asking me if he thinks it's cool if I reference one of my jokes. 
in the show, and it's run into this long-running joke now where we constantly reference the fact that I'm a stand-up comedian outside of the show. In several episodes, we, we can never remember my name, but we'll quote one of my jokes from my stand-up in the, in the show. That's awesome, by the way. And um, actually, it, a lot of the stories Dan tells are actually my real stories that I told Jared. And he's just like, that's a really good one. Let's put that in the show. And then the, the next day... That's how we talk. The next day, he's like, why don't, you, why don't we start the scene with Katra doing that story he did at the barbecue last night? And then I'll just tell a story. Actually, Jive and Pete literally came from... Uh, I was ad-libbing stories... And Mark has an actual friend that they call Jive and Pete, and we needed a, a random name for this character that I was telling stories about. Mm-hmm. And he's like, can you call him Jive and Pete? It's a reference to my buddies. So all the Jive and Pete stories are real stories from my life about a real person from Mark's life. <laughs> Do you ever get to an end of the story where you're just, you're just sharing something bad that happened on a Friday, and then you realize, oh, crap, this is going to end up on Hulu? Um, well, the, for most of the stories have uh, happened a long time ago, and uh, the uh, names are changed. But, but yeah, changing the names <laughs> to protect the innocent. Uh, but the guys who the stories really happen to, like, they want me no. to tell people that it's them. It's like, yeah, I mean, it, like the perfect example of this is that Jared took his actual real life two best friends and made them ostrich fuckers on the show. So that, once the bar is set there, allegedly, yeah. allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> Sorry, pardon my French. Um, yeah, like I mean, but also the part of if you have a resource like this funny man, you have got to use him. You know, so like of course we're like tell that story. You're you're funny. I mean, you know, we're yeah. here to make funnies. Yeah, we're here to make haha. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I just like it that sometimes Dan likes K. Trevor's comedy and sometimes Dan isn't a big fan of K. Trevor's comedy. <laughs> 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 a little long-winded for your uh, squirrely dance yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this season at, at ATX Fest also got to have the league reunion. And when I first got into that show, I was I had friends tell me about it, and I thought this is going to be something that I don't relate to or, or something not in my experience. And what won me over on it was the fact that Jenny, their, really their lone female lead, gives every bit as good as she gets uh, and gets just as many jokes and, and one-ups on the guys. Being the, the lone female lead on Letterkenny, uh, did you know from the start that that this would be a strong character? Was there work to make sure that that you got to be just as in the gang and, and just as in the jokes? I didn't overthink it because it was written to be incredibly um, inclusive for her. Like, there was, I didn't, I, I don't know, I, it didn't even cross my mind to be worried about it because it was just on the page. She is this, mm-hmm. she's part of the crew, they all look out for each other, she calls them on their shit. It was so laid out. So the important thing was just making sure that I was able to bring that kind of confidence because she's a very confident mm-hmm. gal. She sure is. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was it was something, it was nice to not have to be like, okay, how do I make her strong? Like, mm-hmm. she just is How do I interject her more yeah. into this? She's like, no, she's there so much because yeah. she's so fucking strong. Yeah. And she doesn't, and it's not over the top. What I like about Kimmy is, it's not like she has to get in there all the time. And it's not overdone. She's just doing her thing just like everyone else is doing. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. what a strong concept, presence. right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's just, more casually confident. It's just, it. and she's kind of the voice of reason and... And they sort of look to her in a in a really cool way, and they also let her do her thing, even if it bugs them. And it's just it's just people hanging out and family, and it's not a really about her being a woman. Just like it shouldn't be about you guys being men. Like it's just people shooting the shit, and it was always like that. So it's been really nice. She's probably the most powerful character on the show because if you go back and look look at like season one. She drives half of the action on the show. Mm-hmm. She's the one who tells Wayne to start fighting mm-hmm. again. She's the yep. she gets the hockey players to start mm-hmm. taking it serious and practice. She gets yep. Stewart to clean up. Yeah, <laughs> all of that is like Katie just it's true. Smart yeah. up, not sack. And uh, well, she's very <laughs> respected, you know. Yeah. And it and but she doesn't. You know, she, she's not trying. Try, she just is exactly. She doesn't she try to do anything. Yeah. No, she doesn't try to. She doesn't want really want to do it. <laughs> she wants to, like smoke joints and suntan and be around animals, and that's about it. And but she is exactly who she is all the time, and I think people respect humans like that. That's a good way to put it. She's exactly who she is all the time. She really is. Yeah. So it wasn't. It wasn't difficult. I just had to make sure I, I wasn't um, afraid to like be confident like her. I guess. Out of all the running jokes on the show, uh, what is the oddest thing that gets randomly yelled at you 
walking up a sidewalk or, or at, at that a I, store. I bet you have an answer to that question. Uh, people ask me about my butts hole. <laughs> um, that, that happens quite a bit. I actually had to go on the internet and ask them to stop asking uh, my girlfriend questions about paying attention to my butt's hole. Oh, and, yeah, uh, that's fair. Mm. And, like, you know, my that's girlfriend fair. is a real life person and not, not a fictional sweetheart from the show, so they stop making butt's hole comments to her. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I used to get people yelling penis at me all the time from my stand up, so mm. it's a nice change of pace. It's actually to the other side. Yeah. So from, yeah. So from penis to butt hole, we have evolved, hole. haven't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> That's the Christmas Eve bit, right? You gotta do some. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta do some you get your taint in there. Yeah. <laughs> really connect those dots. Taint is for season ten. <laughs> oh, we'll get to it. People aren't. People don't yell stuff at me because I feel like they think that I'm like Katie and I will fight them. <laughs> like, like everyone is Fair sort enough. of like a. F- they're just kind of like, hey, like, really like the show. The like, there's no... Or someone's going to bust out and, like, yeah. smack them, and then you're going to, like, tell them, like, you go smack them. I don't exactly. know how to do this. Yeah, and I'm yeah. so not like that at all, but, but I, 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 I like it. <laughs> Good to have that intimidation factor. I know. I, yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. You just get yelled at things, like, just kind of like... Um, uh, how are you now is the biggest one that I think I get yelled at yeah. and it's kind of it's kind of plain a little bit but at the same time people are usually hammered drunk when they yell at me so it's always kind of funny when they yeah. say things like how are you doing and it's just like that's not what it is not but I'm good how yeah. are you <laughs> you're great so that's that you know those kind of things are, are, are let's get at them yeah, yeah, exactly. pear, pear, pear. yeah exactly yeah and so it's nothing nothing crazy like Trev, not like um, I not say, even one like one of the weird things but, that happens to me now is if ever I post something on Twitter at least three people will have to correct it to Squirrely Dan grammar yeah. and be like, didn't you mean? And then they'll just throw S's on the end of everything that I said. And it's like, well, no, not really. I, I meant to use proper grammar and diction. That's funny. <laughs> Jacob, does Glenn get anything? I get that with the Wayne song a lot. Oh, yeah. People post the Wayne, like, that, whatever that, the, like, tattered uh, journal. I want to be, yeah, yeah, don't, don't, don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> get second I know that song. Yeah, yeah, we all, we all know that, that song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, that. that's what I get. That's Just, awesome. Yeah, What's, I think, people, again, I think people are creeped out by Glenn. Oh, people love Glenn. What's the, uh, what's the craziest joke that you've worked into the show or, or callback bit where you, where you think, I don't know if a single person in the audience is going to love this, but we love it. I, what one of the first things that dropped my jaw on the show was I believe the season two opener being a direct callback to the season one like the hockey players pull up and the guys say everything they said but but episodes ago like I and I thought you know most shows would not assume that the audience binged this fast enough to remember it or or would catch it and it was a brilliant comedic moment of just shutting down and I was like the show takes such risks. Are there any that you thought, we're doing this, I don't care if anyone thinks it's funny? I mean, the uh, the ostrich funny. Yeah. I yeah. would say, like, it, we, we, we started it early and boldly, and it was that. And it was like, is this, we are really, we really doing this? And then, and are we still really doing this? And like, are we still, no. wow, we're still doing this, holy shit. I remember how that came about. We were doing location scouting um, for the first season, um, and uh, we were in two different cars. You were a Jared in one car, I was in another car, and every time we stopped at a location, you and Jared were like, this idea of an ostrich fucking, because Jared had a story about someone who, someone who knew someone. Who knew, yeah, someone who knew someone <laughs> who may or may not. <laughs> and then an every ostrich. stop in between doing locations, yeah. that evolved. That conversation is like they plotted out, you know, more it's, of this it's insanity. Generous, it's generous <laughs> to call it an evolution. <laughs> it almost devolved. <laughs> right? um, yeah. That's how a lot of it happened. Yeah, that's how a lot of it, certainly initially, that's how a lot of it happened. It's just I remember one thing jokes. that we had a lot of discussion about was the uh, back porch setup. And it's not so much the bit, but just the, the setup where we're all sitting in the chairs mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. our mouths are covered by the by the railing. And uh, we did the setup and it's like, this isn't, you're not supposed to do this <laughs> in television. You're supposed to see your faces, aren't you? Let's, yeah. Yeah. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> and then it's, it's become one of our like signature trademark yeah. setups is yeah. the, the back porch uh, <laughs> yeah, that was all Jacob. Jacob, Port, Jacob porch railing on that one. Yeah, yeah. that's because uh, everybody was kind of like, oh, yeah. it also, myself included. It also like, hides oh, this, is, this is interesting. <laughs> it was also, I did actually, it I does. liked it. I liked it aesthetically, but I also did think of it as a safety. I was like, what if they can't get through this? Right. What, what do you mean? They, what if they can't? Get yeah. Yeah. Like, it was because those scenes are like seven, nine pages. Sometimes they're like they're very long, and it was a way of being able to cut around fuck ups as well. Where I'm like, I got six days on what you're saying, or at least it's like a perfect. 
it, it was almost like they're, they're censored. You know, like, it's like, I, 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 we censored them on ourselves. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Kiso thinks he has a great poker face when it comes to holding in a laugh. Yes. He's, he's the worst. Yeah, he's the worst. His whole he's the face worst laughs. by far. He turns well, he gets red. so red. He's going to explode. Yeah. Pulling his curl up. But he also you goes like, actually a great visual. Like, yeah, that's yeah. a good Jesus. But he also has that's his really knee. He also knee jerk goes like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm like, no, I can see you. Yeah. The camera doesn't lie. I can see you're not good. And he apologizes to you a lot. He's like, please don't get mad at me. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. Don't yell at me. Really I, can, I can do this. Everything. Okay, just take him the top. <laughs> You're like cut. Yeah, cut. Yeah. cut. No, but I'm, I'm gonna pause take that a too. If I, if I break Jared in one take, the next take I'll I'll do whatever broke him twice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Once he goes, you got to try and go for it again because oh, it's yeah. so much fun when he breaks. It's just yeah. like then it starts starts the roller coaster going. <laughs> like, there, like, there are, there's always at least one person on set that. Uh, is there to break everybody. <laughs> it's usually, like, Lisa is a great example of that. Melanie oh is a great God, example yes. of that. Yes. Uh, Emma Hunter. Uh, oh, Emma. Um, I mean, yeah, there's, like, there's like kind of weird, unbreakable people who just do not. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I don't know how you get, like, half the stuff you have to do with Melanie, the outtakes with that. Of her telling you that story. Oh my god. Uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 the old cunt is there yeah, for the yeah, young yeah, cock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Just... And she's so drunk. She's, she's so drunk. Right and here no, in my She doesn't face. even drink. I yeah. don't know how she does a drunk yeah. that good. Yeah. She doesn't even drink in real it's, life. It's well. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, so the, yeah, the random, but also the, the cunt scene, I was shocked that we were. You, we, we did that, you guys. Yeah, that was. We had a whole. It was a bit we shocking. We had a conversation with the network about that. Yeah, that was an aggressive because that's not a word that no. is comfy no <laughs> that's the holy grail swear for my mom yeah oh. here and just clear clear the county you should just get get, get out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's that's the truth with a lot of people. That's a that's a it's a big that's word. a big dinger. Doozy, and that that's was like it was like yeah. nine times it was said. Oh no, four hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Times. Well, it started so off with maybe say, nine on the we're page. We're not going to say it once. Yeah. Yeah. If they're letting us say it, the episode so, might as well now be called yeah. cut. Yeah. 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 We don't even mean it the way British people mean. It. See you no. next Tuesday. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, anytime anything jumps network or or increases in budget and, and the back end changes, especially with comedy, there's a risk of, of the tone changing or or the audience wanting something different now that it's bigger. Were there lessons learned in moving from Letterkenny Problems to Letterkenny to, to Hulu now? No. I mean, letter, like, look, the way I would put it, Letterkenny Problems was like three YouTube skits, and then it, we had to make a show for, four, sorry, four. Five, 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 thank you. five. How many fingers? There's, there's two scenes. I have a whole two goddamn hand straight, straight, straight to cameras. cameras. <laughs> yeah, two scenes, three straight to cameras. Yes. But then we had to make a show out of it, you know, which is a completely different mm -hmm. piece. So it was like, we need storylines and characters and to flesh out this universe. We've kind of done that work then. Yeah, and then like we, you know, by the time Hulu picked us up, we'd done four, I don't even know how we count them, four or five seasons, whatever mm -hmm. it was. So we were kind of like in our gear and in our zone. And we've always... You know, we've been very nicely rewarded. People like the show. Then our networks like the show. We don't get notes about anything. We just kind of feel like we just keep doing our thing. Um, and it hasn't really... It's evolved, but, like, it hasn't changed based on anything. It's just like we just do this now. I think everybody's been really conscientious from day one. When Jacob joined um, uh, going into the TV series, you know, the conversation was, you know... Um, Jared shot um, with Nate and the, and the hockey players this beautiful um, scene and image and uh, uh, texture and tone to it. So the the goal was not to not don't fuck with it, right? So Jacob did a great job at, at expanding on that with keeping the spirit and the uh, the ethos of it from the very beginning, keeping that alive. So whether it's budget, really the only thing that's changed with more budget, there's been more great characters yeah. added. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really the only thing. But the, expand the universe. Yeah, yeah. The, but the stories, the stories themselves haven't really. I mean, the fights have gotten a little bigger. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, maybe. No, there's some big Not fights. In season I mean, one. Yeah, yeah. So they kind of the fights yeah. have always vacillated between the little one and the big one. And, yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, but you know, everybody's done such a tremendous job at at, at keeping the show at its heart, um, even as it's grown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is? What do you feel is the the central? mannerism or bit that, that helped you get your character that, that you make sure that for, I assume for Squirrely Dan it's probably pluralizing everything but yeah to, to, for Squirrely Dan it was the malapropisms and the extra plurals like the, the messing up words uh, when I joined up you know uh, Nathan and, and Jared already had established their characters from the YouTube shorts and my whole thing was I had to match their pacing like my mm. stand up delivery is incredibly slow um, and uh, and 
labored and deliberate, and so I had to speed up how I talk for the show, but I wanted to bring something different that you know, neither of the two existing characters did, and, and I spent a lot of time working small towns, and I've met about a hundred squirrely Dans who all <laughs> add plurals where they're not supposed to be <laughs> and don't fully understand how to pronounce words. And it was a, just a gag my buddy and I used to do when we were driving between small towns is we like, you know, just do these characters that don't quite know how to speak right and uh, to make ourselves laugh. And so I, I wanted to bring an aspect of that to the show. And I started doing that in the table read and, and on set. And Jared very quickly came to me and was like, I'm really glad you did that because I kind of wanted you to do that, but I didn't know how to ask you to do that. So just keep doing that. <laughs> and, um, and one thing is like, I always have to rewatch the show before I go back to set to remember just exactly, <laughs> just exactly where Squirrely Dan did. It leads to fun conversations on set because we'll sit down with the script and I'll be like, like, what's what's funnier? Like, how do we mess these up <laughs> yeah. funnier in a funnier way? You know, mm. if we say it like this, is it pauses or? <laughs> <laughs> um, I sort of like. Well, Mark and I were talking about this a little bit earlier. It's like, and this is going to sound really weird, but I'll tell you how I got around to it. Is like. For me, the thing that kind of I think defines not defines my character, but helped me get into it a lot, is um, it would be weird, but uh, horking big loogies um, because <laughs> yep. of a few reasons. Um, uh, I think Daryl. I think Daryl likes to show off a little bit, but who would want to show off that stupid talent? And that's <laughs> kind of a perfect Daryl thing to do. Yeah. Um, it's gross, and so he kind of doesn't really care about being gross, um, but thinks it's also kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Um, and uh, and then, but then, but then gets to show off to his friends a little bit because his friends might think it's kind of cool, but he might think that girls think it's cool, but they don't. <laughs> and so that that kind of helped me. The thumpers. Yeah, the thumpers. <laughs> exactly the thumpers. So that helped me settle into being like, well, this is kind of him as a person. He's a bit off. A bit off. Mm -hmm. yeah. A bit off. Thinks some things are like, he just is, he thinks things are a bit off. You know, thinks some things are going to make him kind of cool and they are not. And then, I don't know, uh, just something about that spit. It was just like, yeah, this kind of defines me in my head as like, yeah, I sort of know where to go with the words now. If I think about a big, huge loogie that I think is hilarious, but also I'm kind of taken back by, you know, I don't know. He's just confused, <laughs> and confusion is a big one for him. Huge. And so that why that that way, uh, you know, horking big loogies is confusing. And Daryl is confused. <laughs> yeah, uh, the scene that I, I think is when Katie, that, where I was like, okay, and I know who she is, despite all the exteriors and how she presents herself. Who she is is um, when she sees Stuart um, at the doctor's office, and she sits down on the steps with him and tries to talk to him about getting clean. Mm -hmm and like what she loved about him when they were younger and how he made mixtapes and and how she's concerned about him because she's this really tough person but she her <laughs> values are really really in the right place and she really cares about her community and regardless of their differences and the fact that he's a skid she's worried for him and she wants him to be safe in the same episode with Derry getting Bit by the bit possum. By the possum mm -hmm. You know, she wants him to be, you know, she takes care of people and yeah. she's got a big She's heart. super loving, but yeah. will also tell you, like, dummy, don't get bit by the dying possum. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, yeah. yeah, she's a very <laughs> nurturing yeah. person underneath all of her toughness. Yeah. And Glenn thinks he's Sharon Stone. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the way the world sees him, and he's wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was like, that my, part my book was that for me with Glenn, where I was like, oh. I got that skinny cigarette, and I was like, he thinks he's in basic instinct. Yeah. Okay, got it, done. Yeah. And that's the part you obviously picked, Sharon Stone. That's so true. My very first She's day on the set, I walked onto the church set, and you guys were filming the opening to that scene, to that episode, yeah. where he gets bit by the possum, and that was my very first experience on set, as I walked on set, and, and then you came around the corner with your pants off, <laughs> Took huh? your underwear off <laughs> and turned around. Was hot. Oh hey! <laughs> <laughs> One poor AD stared my ass all day.
The TV Dudes is an independently run podcast and a member of the Permanent Record Podcast Network. We are exclusively listener supported. If you'd like to help us out, please go to patreon.com slash TV Dudes. You can like us on Facebook and Twitter at TV Dudes and help us out on iTunes by giving us a five star rating and writing a review. To find out more about us, go to the TV Dudes.com and permanentrcrd.com. I'm Grant Davis. Thanks for listening.